quick video here for our final video in chapter 11. We're going to talk about the SQL Server 2008 R2 feature pack. Feature pack concept is not new here in the Microsoft space. Pretty much every edition, I think since 2000, uh, that I can remember, has had a feature pack. And all that really means is that it's just a bunch of random things that you can download in addition to slash separately from the actual installation media. Okay, so some of the items are included on the installation DVD, some of them aren't. So I figure we'll just kind of talk through some of the more popular ones here. So they do have to be downloaded separately. It's, it's weird that they call these the feature pack, yet they must be downloaded separately, but it is the way it is. So I do have the link in here. If you pull up the PDF, I actually have several links in this PDF. So it's probably a, a good idea to get that PDF so you can find... Uh, what those links are right there. So we'll take a quick look at some of the popular ones. Some of them will ship with R2, like I said. Some of them are available as a standalone. Number one, the BPA, Best Practices Analyzer. Uh, this is a tool you're probably already familiar with. I first remember this coming out, gosh man, wow, like seven, eight years ago at this point, wow. Um, so it's been out for a long time. This is just updated to reflect R2, the new hardware that's out there, uh, new best practices. So this is, it's a small set of best practices. This is not a replacement uh, for due diligence on your part, right? It's a good idea to run this, get a, a good overall feel for it, uh, for your system. I think most of the things that it will check, uh, any good consultant would would have figured all of this stuff out without having to install the software anyway. It'd be part of your initial data collection scripts and PowerShells uh, scripts that you would run against any new server you were working on. But it's a good idea if you want to learn what some of the best practices are. Okay, so I, I use it both as a you know when I'm talking to other people as a tool to tell them, hey, you can run this and get a sort of a warm fuzzy feeling. Uh, but you can also use it as a learning tool. You can learn what are the best practices that Microsoft recommends and then you can read up as to why Microsoft would recommend that particular best practice. Uh, this particular tool does support 2008 and R2 so you can run it against both. You can even run it remotely. But you're talking about things like you know, it's going to check your max degree of parallelism, and it's going to see whether it's a an accepted value. Uh, it's going to check your query governor, and you know, all these different login settings, uh, your security settings, how many sysadmins you have, is the local administrators group part of the sysadmins. It's going to look at all of those and offer suggestions. Uh, it does have a separate download link. Um, for whatever reason, the previous page the feature pack itself uh, on my machine at least was having trouble it was not actually uh, you're supposed to click on the link from within that feature pack page and it just wasn't working so i figured i'd go ahead and give you that separate link there uh, you do have to install a couple of other things this runs in the context of the baseline configuration and anal analyzer uh, so you'll have to have that installed. And it also has to have PowerShell 2.0. That is not installed with SQL Server 2008 R2. If you'll remember from earlier that uh, SQL Server 2008 R2 will install PowerShell 1.0 if you don't have PowerShell. So you will need to install R2's, uh, sorry, PowerShell 2.0. Like I said, you can run it remotely. But you see what you can check. You can check boxes and say, this is what I want to run. Uh, this is the instance I want to run. I want to check reporting services or anal analysis services uh, and so forth. So a good little tool. Uh, it's going to come up and give you a bunch of things that it says are non-conforming, a bunch of things that it says are errors and are warnings. And I promise you, you're going to get errors, you're going to get warnings every time you run it, okay? Um, the trick is, and where you provide value, is how do you know that something reported as a non-compliant error is really something that you should change? Just because it's not a Microsoft best practice doesn't mean it has to be changed, does it? Is every Microsoft best practice the best practice for everything in the world? No, it isn't. In case you shook your head and said yes. <laughs> okay, uh, so you do have to bring a little bit of knowledge to this, but it is a good little tool.
Now for those of you needing to migrate from other systems, they offer this thing called the Migration Assistant. And this SQL Server Migration Assistant is really sort of an umbrella name. Uh, there's the umbrella, the, the Migration Assistant for Access, for Oracle, for MySQL, for Sybase, uh, and for different versions of each. So you can run those. Uh, you need to download the one you need, right? So you'd go download the Access Migration Tool or the, the you know, the MySQL one. So go to that link and check those out. Uh, one of the cool things here, uh, just continuing the SharePoint and SQL Server integration, the reporting services integration, is the reporting services add-on for SharePoint to add in for 2010. Just basically allows you to run your report server from within SharePoint. Right? Now you can have collaborative reports, centralize your reports, assign security on your reports, and all that. Right? There's the link for that as well. Power Pivot. We've talked about Power Pivot a couple of times. So I don't want to spend in too much here, but just can go download that. All right. This is what you would did deploy on your analyst desktops. Desktops. Okay. Uh, you do have some example policies. If you're working with policy-based management, you can install those as well. One of the more confusing bits I find is the idea of the SQL Server 2008 Remote Blob Store. Okay, so the remote blob store is allows you to move your blob storage outside of SQL Server. And if you've been around SQL Server for a while, you recognize we already have something like that that came out in 2008 called FileStream, right? So if you've got FileStream, this is actually different. Now, it's mildly different. I mean, it, well, I don't know. It, it is diff it's different enough, okay? FileStream has to have NTFS. Okay, so you are storing it in MTFS. Whereas with Remote Blob Store, you can store it on RAW, you can store it on FAT, you can basically find the cheapest storage you can, store it on there, you can code against it with API access. A little more, a little different, a little more um, configurable, I guess, than the Remote Blob Store. But in the end, it works the same way from a SQL Server perspective. Uh, it's just placing a... A, basically a pointer inside the database so that you you know it can keep track of where that particular blob is stored again there's a there's a cool white paper here uh, that I listed in there and that's it told you it'd be a quick roundup I'll see you in chapter 12